that makes me think about the conversation of only like one black comedian at a time we've heard. Mm-hmm. Mm. Um, I even might even go as far as to say like there's like one maybe leading black male actor. Mm-hmm. Now I want to go into black female comedians. Mm. You're a female comedian. Mm-hmm. Tiffany Haddish. Mm. Conversations about what she represents. <laughs> Hold up. Um, do you think one can be too black for Hollywood? And do you think that? Oh, yeah. You think if you maybe would have danced a, a, a bit differently? Absolutely. Opportunities would have? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, there's a comedian, and when you said that, I'm trying to think of his name. There's a comedian that I met in L.A. I think he's from Chicago. But that's his, that's his moniker, if you will. That's his byline. He said, I'm too black for Hollywood. Shout out to Corey Holcomb. She's probably talking about Corey. You know, uh, I, it's either too real or too black. I think it's too black for Hollywood. Yeah. Um, if you got, you got to read a book called An Empire of Their Own, How the Jews Invented Hollywood, yeah. to really understand what the, the deal is. So I ask oftentimes people who are in the industry, have you read this book? And when they have not, I just go, well, maybe you should. Yeah, I haven't read that book, but it's on my list. And it's also... Uh, a bunch of documentaries that I've seen that kind of examine what's going on in the book. So, yeah, I'm aware. I'm aware of how the origins of Hollywood and what it means. Yeah. Because it really explains they didn't they, they didn't create this for any of y'all, any of us. Right. At all. So the fact that we're there, it was only because of black exploitation films, quote unquote, saved Hollywood. After they got right. tired of the big movies with Esther Williams swimming, Fred Astaire and Grace Williams, uh, Grace Kelly dancing, the, the, uh, and the big westerns were no longer attractive yeah. to the viewing, you know, the ticket buyers. And so they took a chance on m movies like uh, Black on uh, Five on the Black Hand Side, um, um, Cleopatra Jones. Uh, uh, Tamara Dodson and some of the other actresses of that time. Uh, Pam Greer, Foxy Brown, don't forget about Dolomite. I guess Dolomite, was Dolomite independent movies? <laughs> I don't know, Dolomite might have been a little more independent. But you know, now that I think about it, he might have been backed by some type of studio. But yeah, they were they were throwing money at black movies in the 70s. Once they figured out black exploitation was profitable, oh my God. Jim Brown and some of the people that I, I don't can't call mm. a Sonny, uh Sonny Gaines, Sonny Jim Gaines. Um just um Bea Richards, who was who was one of my mentors. But when I hear them talk about black film, black films saved Hollywood. Y'all need to learn. That's a need fact. To understand. And I'm talking back when we were not seen at all. And so once Hollywood realized that we would spend money to see ourselves, they started producing more films. Mm -hmm. But Hollywood was bankrupt before that. So it was black films, the so-called black exploitation films, right. that saved Hollywood when it was going under. Like TP saved Lionsgate. Yeah, I said it. Now, shout out to Tyler Perry. She's right about that. Tyler Perry is... Now about to save BET. You know, we're going to see how it turns out. But yeah, when Lionsgate and Tyler Perry linked up, they were not doing the business that they're doing now. In fact, a lot of companies that were on Lionsgate, Lionsgate's level were completely ran out of the building. They didn't have any more market share. You know, even talking about that, right, as far as the empire they own, which alludes to the fact that they control the industry or let's say the others, others control the industry, which is their game of Hollywood. That makes me think about the conversation of only like one black comedian at a time we've heard. Mm -hmm. mm. Um, I even might even go as far as to say like there's like one maybe leading black male actor. Mm -hmm. Now I want to go into black female comedians. Mm. You're a female comedian. Mm -hmm. Tiffany Haddish. Mm. Conversations about what she represents. <laughs> hold on, hold on. Uh, that's some sub vocals for you if I've ever heard it. <laughs> mm. Mm? She doesn't give me uh, a Phyllis Stickney in mm -mm. terms of energy. Mm -mm. Is that Hollywood choosing someone like that mm -hmm. to repel for? Okay. Yeah, let's keep it 1,000. We ain't playing. I mean, why, you know. <laughs> All the opportunities. I've been in the game 40 years. Hey, I don't, <laughs> my heart pumps no Kool-Aid in case you needed to know. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the truth is the truth. 
it's evident. Not taking, there's some that are extremely talented, but you have to look at who and why they choose what they choose. That's going to be somebody, see, you're not, I, you, I, I'm not gonna be your favorite Svatsa. There was a comedian that I know, uh, she's now a director. I was at the comic strip and the uh, danger fields. I did all that back when it was literally, you would stand out in the cold, the rain, whatever, they didn't care. They were gonna give out eight numbers and you got three minutes. They were gonna hand out eight numbers, there may be 200 people out there, but the, only those who persevered to be the last eight to get those numbers would get those three minutes to go on at the improv, the comedy store. That was the way it was. The game has totally changed. So you had to really have tenacity, talent, patience, a whole lot of things, or you had to be willing to sub su uh, submit to the casting couch mm -hmm. you know that was not me i wonder does 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 tiffany is she aware why she's been selected or is she just like happy? i don't think she cares because i think at some point you know um it was also, you know, and I don't know all of her background, but I know that there was a time she was in a certain camp, you know, I think. Yeah, the Richard Pryor camp. Yeah, so yeah. so there, there was already a certain preparation, you know, there was already, uh, a, a, if you will, you know, her, her. A grooming. A grooming, thank you. There was a certain grooming. So they already were aware of her. And then there were things that I just probably wouldn't do. And this is me. So I, I know about the camp that she's talking about, and really it was more of an outreach. I mean, could it be, it's definitely a connection to the industry, but I don't know if it's necessarily like a one-to-one -one in the grand scheme of Hollywood. Was she on somebody's radar from that camp? Potentially, maybe, but she did it when she was like, like in high school and like, you know, as a kid, you know? So I don't know if that's necessarily what is the one-to-one -one on her career, but she's, I, I do know some people that she was on their podcast and I think they pulled some strings for her, like in those early days when she was still living in her car, you know, cause that was part of the episode. You know, you were just like shocked that this woman that seemed so funny and full of life was really struggling out here, you know? And that might've been the push that I think pushed Tiffany over the top, if I had to guess. Her. And then there were things that I just probably wouldn't do. And this is me. I'm not going to be, you know, passing gas. Flatulation is not funny to me, especially being a female. So yeah. certain things you're not going to be able to talk about me and around me. And I'm going to kiki with you. It's just not going <laughs> to go down like that because it's disrespectful. I'm not going to let you. Yeah. With Tiffany doing fart jokes or something. <laughs> like, but I'm glad Phyllis here, who, you know, like I said, she's been a She's been in the game for a long time. Um, I'm glad she has a line and a boundary. You know what I mean? You have to kind of set those things up for your career so that you aren't compromised. You know what I'm saying? Certain things you're not going to be able to talk about me and around me, and I'm going to kiki with you. It's just not going to go down like that because it's disrespectful. I'm not going to let you introduce me as my favorite schwatzer. Mm -hmm. I'm just... Schwatzer is black. My favorite black. Mm. She killing it. <laughs> Just not gonna do that. But at that time, if you want, you had to hang out. You know, it's still somewhat that. What what I alluded to earlier is like I'm not hanging out with you. We not get ready to go back to your crib, my crib. We not gonna do that. Yeah. We can talk about the game. We can talk about you know my material. We can do all of that. But me as a, a as a mate or as a as a, a, a conquest is not a part of it. And some people are just willing to play that game. You know. Um, I'd rather have gotten here and be able to look myself in the mirror and feel good. I don't, you know, and not that I, not that I have not done things that I would, that I, like I said, I repented and meant it. You know what I mean? I did my repent and, and I'm moving forward. Uh, there were things that I've done that, that I'm not, that I would not repeat, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, but it was not something to get a job or to get casted. It was just things, you know, growing up and living life, uh, as an artist that I experienced. You know, and um, in recent times, we would see an emergence of uh, Jonathan Majors in his plight. Um, and it kind of made me think about the narrowness that you will see black heterosexual men pushed in front of the mass media. I thought about Wesley. I haven't seen too many Wesley. That's a great, great point. You know, is there a place in Hollywood for a heterosexual man in 2023? That's what we gotta ask. I know they exist, but is it celebrated?
or is it tolerated? Mm. Made me think about the narrowness that you will see black heterosexual men pushed in front of the mass media. I thought about Wesley. I haven't seen too many Wesley Snipes coming through the door, like, you know, like New Jack City. Um, what are your thoughts when you see that? Do you think about an empire of your own when you see how quickly, I mean, what he's being accused of, and we don't know if it's true or not, but what he's being accused of is not great at all. However, it does seem kind of interesting how they're handling him and yeah, yeah. kind of villain, yeah. Just any thoughts about seeing that play out? Well. You know, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not a novice, nor and I'm a student of of history, right? So I understand what the studio system is. Mm -hmm. It still exists. These are people that are that are chosen, that are coded, and there's certain things that they're allowed to do, and there's certain things that they're it's okay and it's mm. sanctioned, and you're in the club because they know who you are. They encourage you to be who you are because that's where they take the pictures. Mm -hmm. And those pictures are the ones that, that, that come to have you compromise yourself. They go, oh, well, you know, um, you, you, hi, which one do you want your daughter to see or your wife mm. when they catch you in compromising positions? And isn't that the game? The game is leverage. They catch you in a compromising position, then they got you by the balls. She, she said it. You know what I'm saying? Interesting. Right. That they've created for you to be in. So now they created the situation for you to be in that made you feel that you were above the law, right? And then later they come, you come back and, oops, somebody blew the whistle, or oops, it's discovered. But they know who you are, mm -hmm. what your vices are before they give you the golden key. Man, shout out to Comedy Hype for that very poignant and needed interview. I don't think a lot of people will realize how deep that interview was. Um, and somebody that's there that is willing to talk freely, that's kind of seen a level of success, you know what I mean? Um, that's that's a, that's a good get, man. Shout out to Comedy Hype for that one. But uh, yeah, what do y'all think about that? Phyllis Stickney, she touched on some really key points about Tiffany Haddish and her rise to fame and subsequent subsequent fall. You know what I mean? We don't know if she'll recover from this, this, this Aerie Spears thing. I'm pretty sure her teams should have been aware of this stuff and, and able to put out any fires before something like this could happen, unless that was the plan. But Phyllis Stickney, man, she goes back, man. And I, I remember hearing about her comedy. You know, stand-up comedy in the early days wasn't as um, as publicized, but I always remember hearing her name, always remember hearing good things about her, um, her roles in, in all types of films. She's an accomplished actress. And obviously, you know, the wisdom is there. You know what I mean? She's giving up the wisdom right now and letting us in on how in the inside baseball is played in a very, you know, brief moment here. I'm sure if you got her over a couple of drinks, you know, and, and uh, you know, hey, I'm sure there's some stories that she can tell. Absolutely. But, uh, but yeah, she definitely gave it to Tiffany Haddish. Like I she talked about the Jonathan Majors thing. And I'm just gonna say she's pretty much on point from what I, from what I know. Anyway, let me know what you think about it in the comments. If you like this video, like, comment, subscribe. Hit the bell notification for all uploads. This is Fawcett Media.